Hey everyone, I'm back. I've been away since mostly I do a lot of Space Wolf stuff and rarely anything. But here's the thing. Today we're go today is basically the start, the big start of the new edition. Basically, Warhammer 40,000 8th edition. Now, I have right here with me. Oops. <laughs> Gotta get that a little later. Uh, I have right here with me is Index Imperium 1. Now, in this book contains the Space Marine, all the Space Marine, all the current Space Marine chapters. And if you want, you can try and make your own Space Marine chapter, even if, with the new Primaris Marines. Now, here's the thing. I was wanting. Now, here's the thing. I've been keeping a lot. The thing is, that I kind of delved into the dark, uh, into the dark, and looked at the and kind of found some. While well, in my digging through archaic, through ancient archaic knowledge, I found some new stuff that had not been used yet, had not been talked about yet. And uh, by that, I'm talking about the rules and the stuff. So I kind of took a look at this stuff a little early. But uh, what I'm going for here is that this is kind of the official talk to and reveal. Because here's the thing, I never really, because the thing is like, I, I wanted to do, uh, I've been wanting to do a video on the official release day. I didn't want, and as long as I had the, the actual book in my hand. Now the problem is, is that I have the, I purchased the official core rule book, but the problem is, is that I don't have, I don't have it because the thing is, is that it's uh, it's with my train it's with transport issue so I'm kind of and uh, so until that transport issue is fixed I can't really do anything until I get it so I'm although my although my la although my my local the manager of my local GW said he he was he might actually try to send it to me by human cannon uh, so I was looking. Over, so as soon as I got this thing in my hand, I was looking over it like crazy. I was even wait, reading it while I was waiting for my haircut. Uh, now here's the thing: these indexes are these indexes are designed to be day one play for the day one play books, because what it's because it's like. Games Workshop has official has revealed that they are going to be doing an aggressive release of the codexes to kind of to get everything up to speed because you in the because in the books you don't have because in the indexes you you have very little fluff you have psychic powers and some army special rules but not all of the armies have like unique special rules yeah but it does allow you but it does allow you to build to help build an army and it does allow you to help it does allow you to kind of get things started so it kind of helps you build up your force so what I'm all since I don't also since I don't have the book right now I am going to have to use the battle primer which is which is free of course so here are the thing the core so here so basically this is uh 15 pages 15 pages of rules and and you and basically you could get your girlfriend you get your boyfriend you could get the you can get your neighbor who's your na your, your your neighbor and play the game with what models that you have and it would like and it will be a fun thing. The thing I like about this is that they've really pushed it to kind of get people into the game, uh, to get new people, fresh blood into the game. Because it's like without fresh blood, how can the game survive? Do we want the game to die with our generation or the previous generation or the previous generation, or do we want it to live on? So I say, like, and people have actually been kind of kind of topsy turvy on some of this stuff like oh they're making it too simple or they're making it so that uh new people but they're getting rid of the complexity of it or sort of some shit like that but here's the thing it's basically seven in a single in a battle round it's movement psychic phase if you have psychers shooting phase charge phase fight phase morale phase now the thing is is that the, now, is these are very good. These are very simple, 
very straightforward, very to the point. And from what I've heard, people have done play tests of this, and they have, and they and mostly, they find this game, this new edition, fun and effective. Because the thing is, is that the developers have gone to the lengths to balance out armies. So no more Thunderwolves. Uh, so no more Thunderwolf uh, armies uh, becoming. Uh, the, the tournament winners because these guys have made it so that it's down to the wire like okay you could win by a single you are likely you could win by a single uh, victory point so you so it's very so they really push you into it and also it's and also the the fun the, like you have like there they have three types of play open play narrative play and matched play Match play is used by with is used with uh, points for your for models for war gear. Now narrative and open play can like open play you can just bring whatever models you don't have you can just bring whatever models and you can compose units and it's like oh you know it's like it's some it's a quick game basically you could just set up and like you can set up in like two minutes maybe less. And having and have a game that can go on for maybe like less, I'd say, an hour, and that and that's kind of fun. People have time. People. The thing is, like, we're we're in a society where everything is time. Everything is time. So, here's what we've got. Uh, movement phase. Uh, Model can move in any direction uh, to a distance in inches because they made the change that they in, they took out initiative, but they gave models each of the each model like each they like each model each unit has their own movement. So like if a a gr if a unit so basically infant some infantry can move six inches. There are some infantry that can move six six, six inches. Like uh, Grey Hunters, they can move six inches. Uh, if you give them a, a Wolf Guard Pack Leader in Terminator armor, it re the Wolf Guard Pack Leader's armor move makes the Wolf Guard Pack Leader move five inches. So, but the thing is, is that the Wolf Guard are still moving can still move six inches, which is amazing. Uh, let's see. Uh, if a uh, data sheet. Uh, for a model says it can fly, it can move across the models and terrain if they were not there, which is, which is of course like back in the seventh edition. All models in the same army are friendly model, are all models the same army friendly models, models controlled by an opposing player are enemy models of course. Falling back, now this is different. Units starting the movement phase within one inch of an enemy unit can either remain stationary or fall back. But the problem is, but the thing is, is that the that when they fall back, they can no longer they cannot move, advance, shoot, or charge unless they are specified in their rules. And there are rules that can make a model uh, shoot and charge. So, and speaking of advancing, they roll into the movement phase running. So, it, movement so you can move. And you can, or and if you decide to, you can advance. You can roll a so you roll a d6, add that movement, add that number to the move to your movement. But you can't shoot and you can't charge. It's simply to get there quicker. And the thing is, I like and what I like is is that they made it with reinforcements. That in matched play, if at the end of the third battle round, if none of your models have made it onto the board, they're considered destroyed. But you can get, and also, oh, oh, and the thing is, is that flyers no longer have to remain in reserves at the beginning of the first, at the beginning of the game. So you can have a flying trance, so you can basically have a unit of wolfing or a unit of jump, of wolf, of sky claws, ready to jump, or grey hunters or blood claws, ready to jump out at turn two. Because a flying transport, because uh, of trans, because when it comes to disembarking, a transport has to be had. A transport doesn't should not can't can't move. So it's like all right. So 
if you're disembarking a unit, the transport cannot move until the unit has disembarked, and then the transport can fly off, or move, or whatever. It, it, it works, and also models can charge out of their out of tanks. So there's no limit. They can even shoot and tank. They can basically a model can shoot and charge. They can shoot wherever they want, and which is amazing. So psychic phase. So the psychic phase has changed quite a bit, and I find it's a lot more balanced and not too overpowering, like it did, like in seventh edition, where a, someone with a psyker heavy army could overwhelm you, and it's like it took forever to like. And it took forever, and I was like, okay, the psychers are dangerous, but with the amount of powers that they have, they're not too dangerous. Like for, like, okay, so a, each psyker has a specific set of psychic powers. So currently, they have three psychic powers, and I think they're gonna. So like each faction and army has like three psychic powers or special type of abilities. And what they're going to do is, and they, you have to roll 2d6 for a psychic power. And it, it says specifically on them, on uh, the units, on the model's uh, data sheet, that they can cast this type of power. They can cast this many powers. They can deny this many, uh, they can deny the witch a certain number of times. And it's effective. It's... And, that, and also, all the models know smite, so it's so it really ch so it really changes the field up on psychers. It doesn't make them too powerful. It doesn't make them too weak. It just uh, it makes like okay, they're useful. Because this is the thing. It's about it's how useful a model can be in in this in this new edition. Because people kind of because the way people would act is like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna roll for all this stuff and I'm gonna roll for all these powers um, or, or it's like oh, no I'm, not, I'm gonna take a unit of blood claws oh blood claws are not as effective as they used to be or gray hunters are not effective as they used to be shooting phase we kinda got into that although I like the new system like some models can like some weapons can cause like d6 or d3 wounds or and can cause damage now damage is now damage is a new thing that they've done. It's kind of like it's like it's like wounding. So it's like it's uh, you can cause d6 damage per wound uh, per uh, per wounding roll. So it's like oh I'm gonna cause so basically uh, my and, and the thing is like vehicles are now good. Basically they changed this whole thing with vehicles. Vehicles now have vehicles and fortifications now have wounds so what I'm and actually just another tip I'm actually thinking of getting the I'm actually gonna try and get the Astartes uh, the the uh, index Astartes uh, Adeptus Astartes book from Forge World I really don't have the money for Forge World stuff but I might have, but I'm gonna try because it looks really cool they just they someone uh, previewed the Mastodon and it's got like 30 wounds and it looks so badass. Huh. So, um, so what I'm gonna do right now, let's get into the th into my army of choice in the Space Wolves, uh, in the Adeptus Astartes is the Space Wolves. Now they made some actually some, some very significant changes to the Space Wolves, I'm impressed. With some, I'm impressed with some of this stuff, and I'm a little, I'm a little like, eh, come on, guys. So let's start off with the the head hot show of the Space Wolves, Logan Grimnar. He's his the thing is like they took away his ability that okay he can uh, choose like they took away his ability that okay he can choose. What and how he can swing his axe in combat. So like, okay, like you could allocate uh, three attacks to his two-handed ability, to his two-handed swing, and uh, 
another two to his uh, one-handed swing. So they changed, So they took that away. The thing is, like they, 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 these are kind of fluffy rules, but they did not make him overpowered. Now here's the thing with now here's the thing with characters in the in the new edition. If they they cannot be targeted in shooting attack, if they're being targeted in shooting attacks, they cannot be targeted. Like if a model is is in front of them or is closer to an enemy model, the enemy unit, enemy the enemy unit has to fire. The enemy unit cannot fire on the model itself. Cannot fire on the character. He has to target the closest one. He has to target the closest model, unless he's a sniper. Unless he has a sniper rifle. Grimnar uh, now Grimnar has like seven wounds. He hits on twos, moves five inches because he's in Terminator armor. Uh, strength four, T four, attacks five with a leadership of a nine. Now, would you think? Now it's kind of like what? How is that going to be leadership nine? With a two plus armor save. Now here's the thing with armor saves. Now, they are modif There are modif armor modifiers in on weapons, and like, and like characters can have other can like positive modifiers and negative modifiers. So mostly weapons have ne negative modifiers. So say a, so with Grimnar's at with the axe of Morkai, it improves his strength by two. It has a minus three, so basically, if a person, if a model has to take an armor save, their armor save, say they have an armor save of a three, so it reduces their armor to a six. And if it goes to a seven, then basically, then if the armor uh, rending, basically it's the eight armor penetration rend, how, how the weapon rends through the armor, and it's so, and it's actually very well balanced. Especially with the fact that all these guys have have like multiple wounds that they cannot like it's hard for them to be taken down in a single vault. It's rare for them to be taken down in a single shot. Uh, Logan Grimnar on Stormrider. Now here's the thing: Grimnar loses his protection as being a character when he's on Stormrider because it bumps him up to twelve wounds. And at a movement of a ten, and he can move ten inches if he's like I like these damage. I like these damage charts. Like he can move ten inches if he's at full health and has seven wounds left. And he has, and he gets, and the thing is, he has additional attacks from his thunder wolves that are pulling him. Call it's a rule call. It's a, a attack called flurry of teeth and claws, which is strength five hits with his weapon skill, and it rends armor on a minus one actually hold on I never really got I never I kind of I never really talked on some of this stuff so he has a uh, so the temp so the psychers so the rune priests in the space wolves have a uh, ability call have the tempestus ability three powers storm collar which gives them cover uh, tempest's wrath and as a warp charge value of six, if manifested, pick an enemy unit within one 18 inches of the psyker. Your opponent must subtract one from any hit rolls they make for that unit at the start of your next psychic phase. That's actually impressive. You can reduce the person oh a mile's ballistic skill. Huh, I would use that so much on heavy weapons on a heavy weapon squad. And Jaws of the World Wolf is impressively good. So it's like it, you have to roll a seven or higher. So you roll two d six and subtract the target's movement move characteristic. The target unit suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the result. So basically, if it's like say Terminators are hit by this thing, they can be brought down. Like they can like. They can be easily brought down. You could likely get five. You could like get five mortal wounds off them if you could. Like their abilities are, and they shall know no fear. You can reroll failed morale tests for this unit. Uh, Ragnar Blackmane, Crom Dragon Gaze, Harold Deathwolf. 
they did they did they did good stuff here. I Ragnar I can move six inches, weapon skill two, ballistic skill two. Here's the thing what they've done, really done with the space wolves is they've improved their weapon skill. It's very clever. Uh Frost Fang is his sword. Okay, ra so, like here's a, here's one of the we weapon options that he has. One of like, the war gear options that he has. Ragnar's unit may include his two loyal Fenrisian wolves, Svanger and Ulfgar. Svanger and Ulfgar attack with their teeth and claws. Now here's the odd thing, though. These are Svanger and Ulfgar are Fenrisian wolves. They are attached to his unit. So. But they can move 12 inches. And Ragnar can move only 6. So, why. So, unless. So, I do not know how these guys would be effective. Unless they've. How, unless he has an ability that says, okay, these guys can increase his distance. Or can, like, increase his charge distance by a, by a certain amount. And they do not, and they, and the thing is, like, if they are a part of his unit, they're still, they're classified as, they would be classified as infantry. And so they can be put inside of his, so they can basically be put inside of a transport. And they never, and they don't state, speculate uh, what beasts, or how big beasts are. So it might be three models that you're putting in there. Crom Dragon Gaze. Single model armed with worm claw, a bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades. Only one of this model may be included in your army. Jarl of Fenris. Yeah, a lot of these guys have a rule called Jarl of Fenris. And actually, I never got into uh, Ragnar's rules. He has an ability that called Insane Bravado, which means that he can uh, perform a heroic intervention at six inches instead of three. So if a mo so if you're so you have an enemy so you have so if one of your guys one of your models is or unit is in, engaged in a combat, he can go if he's six inches away from that combat, then he can then he can charge in then he can pile in and go and and kill as many men as off as possible, and while he is in that combat. His ability allows him to re-roll for friend for him and his and other units to re-roll ones in hitting when hitting, which is impressive. So you want to place this guy around a pack of uh, blood claws. Crom and uh, Warhowl allows him to re-roll failed charges, allows him and other models to re-roll failed charges. Which is impressive. Crom Dragon Gaze is a single model armed with Worm Claw. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten to that part. He's a Jarl of Fenris. He has a Belt of Rust, which which uh, Wolf Lords have that increases their invul save to a, that makes their invul save a four plus. The Fierce Eye. Enemy units that are within three inches of Crom. And Starlum must reduce their leadership by one for the duration of the phase, which is impressive. Harold Deathwolf. Now here's the thing with Thunderwolves, they can now move ten they can only move ten inches now. Not twelve. Which got kind of annoyed a lot of players. And the fact that it's like they kinda they they had to tone down the Thunderwolves a bit because people were overly were over basically they saw no options when it comes to playing them. Cause when it comes to playing Space Wolves, they saw that there was there were few options to play, like the like either go Thunderwolf or Wolfen or Parish. And I've proved them wrong on a few occasions. Uh, weapon skill two plus. Harold Deathwolf is a weapon skill two plus plus skill two plus. Of course, he's a Wolf Lord. Strength four. T5, wound 7, attacks 4 with leadership of a 9 and a 3 plus armor save. Now here's the now here's the thing. There's a rule, he has a piece of war gear 
called the Mantle of the Ice Troll King. It, it says, add one to any saving throws you make for Harold Deathwolf against shooting attacks. Now, Harold Deathwolf has, a, has, Deathwolf has a storm shield, so that's a three plus invulnerable save. Meaning, likely, that he's just taking his shield and his cloak and kind of putting it up against himself. And it's like, this guy now has a three, has a two plus invulnerable save. Has a two plus invul save. Which is a mate which would be amazing because it because and it's logical. Mostly because of this of his expert hunter rule, which says during deployment you can set up Harold Deathwolf ready to outflank his prey instead of placing him on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, he can join the battle. Set him up so that he is within twelve inches of any battlefield edge of your choice and more than nine inches away from any from any enemy models. I like this because what it does is it provides him with a perfect with a proper armor save that with a proper armor or invul save with a proper invul save that can, that he can shrug off most wounds that can really kill him. And if you deploy with drop pies in his locate uh, around his location, giving him a pro a def an arm a shield of some kind, then you have what you have there is a way to kind of get is a way to kind of really bring him in. Lord of the Wolfkin, all friendly Thunderwolf models, units, and friendly units of Fenrisian or Cyberwolves within six inches of the in the morale phase can use Harold Deathwolf's leadership instead of their own, which is uh, impressive. I have to say, it is impressive. If you can get a few dozen, like a few dozen uh, Fenrisian wolves into combat, then you've made, then you can really make your points back. Uh... Animation of fear. So let's see. Canis Wolfborn, Harold's champion. He has a two up. He, has, he can move moves as fast as the Thunder Wolf. Two plus weapon skill, but he has a five. But his skill is a five plus. He has, he's a strength four, T five, wound six, attack four, leadership eight with a three plus armor save. Which I'm kind of annoyed at because he since he's a champion. But what's but he's actually well protected if but he would actually be protected if he is properly leading if he's properly well covered in Thunderwolves or Fenrisian wolves. Now Canis has two wolf claws. Uh, A model armed with two wolf claws can make one additional attack with this weapon. So basically, he's at. So basically, he has five attacks, which is awesome. Now, Thunderwolves have crushing teeth and claws. So he makes three additional attacks at with a different weapon profile. Born of Wolves, you can add one additional teeth and claws or crushing teeth and claws attack on the fight. Phase for all friendly models in Thunderwolf. Fen Thunderwolf, Fenrisian Wolves, or Cyberwolves units that are within six inches of Canis Wolfborn at the start of the phase. So, I here's the thing. I, here's what I like so much. They make it so that I definitely have to have this model in my army to make a certain strategy work. It makes it essential that you need him to fight. He's an alpha predator, so he can he has alpha predator, so he can re-roll failed charge rolls for Kane. So so he can re-roll failed charge rolls. And now we're into rune priests. Now rune priests, they say, are psychers. This model can attempt to manifest two psychic powers in each friendly psychic phase, and attempt to deny one psychic power in each enemy psychic phase. It knows the smite power and one psychic power from the Tempestus discipline. 
So that means that you can use smite or a psychic power. And here's the and here's the, one of the things I like. You don't have to roll for your psychic powers. You what you can do is that you can uh, you can pick them now. The power, the psychic powers are not overpowered anymore, so we can just pick. Uh, weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 3, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 4, attacks 3, leadership 9, and they're characters, of course. Level 3 plus save. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, a rune priest can take runic armor, which is a 5 plus armor save. Hmm... Jump pack assault. If you give them a jump pack, they can deep strike. They're basically, they got rid of deep strike, so they're doing like okay, jump pack assault, drop jump pack assault, drop pot assault, um, and special infiltrations. Runic axe they can have a runic stave, a runic sword. This model may take a psychic hood. Which what it does is you can add one to, to deny the witch, which tests you make for a model equipped with psychic hood against 12 inches. Now here's the thing. Space Wolves had a special ability, used to have special abilities that stop, that really could stop psychers. Now they took them out, but I have to, but I'm kind of keeping my hopes up for the Codex, which is going to flesh the, the new, the 8th edition Space Wolves out a little more. Uh, also, the thing is, is like if you charge, you get to hit first, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> plasma weapons are so awesome now. So if a weapon, so basically, plasma weapons have two profiles now. So they, it's called standard, and the other is called supercharge. So if you supercharge your pistol, your so if you supercharge a plasma weapon, if you roll a one, it can result. So if you roll a one, it can result in the weapon. The weapon doesn't wound you anymore; it kills you. So here's the thing that I like. So here's the one of the things that I like. The Space wolves have new have abilities that allow you to re-roll hit rolls. Like you can like you can reroll hit rolls for like with if you have a, a wolf guard uh, like if you have a wolf lord or you have a which a wolf lord allows you to reroll fail to hit rolls a wolf a wolf guard battle leader allows you allows your models to reroll failed wounding rolls if I'm, if I'm correct they have Rune Priest and Terminator armor, Rune Priest on bikes, which can move 14 inches, is awesome as fuck. Uh, Stormcaller, Najal Stormcaller. I am very disappointed with how they've with how they've really worked with Najal since with, uh, since fifth edition. Fifth edition, he was a beast on the battlefield. Now he is really not as strong as he used to be. Like back in fifth, he had his his Lord of Tempest table, which was fun, and now it's like they 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 slowly reduced him. But still, like I said, I'm keeping my eye out for the I'm keeping my eye out for the uh, Space Wolves Codex in the future, which I, which my hope is the near future. Uh, Night he it's a weapon skill, ballistic skill. Nightwing is his is his Cyber Raven. It's a strength three, which I'm which I love the new table. So basically, on most on things on a, on a toughness five model, he can hit on fives, but anything at six and above, he hits on sixes. Staff of the Stormcaller is a plus two minus one D three damage. And he has three attacks. He has a even his arm even in his runic armor, he has a bolt pistol. He still has a bolt pistol. 
uh, oh, 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 he's the Nightwing is Nightwing is an assault weapon. So basically, what happens with what they've done with assault weapons now is that you can advance and you can shoot. Actually, hold on, let me see here. Because they work with advancing. Oh, awesome. So basically, a unit, basically, when it comes to advancing, a model can move, basically a model can advance forward. But here's the thing, they cannot move, they cannot charge or they cannot shoot or charge that turn. But unless they have, but they, but when it comes to shooting, they can shoot their assault weapon, but at minus their ballistic skill. But also, it can result in, but also, psychic powers can still be cast after advancing. Which is amazing. Uh, wolf priests. Actually, hold on. Uh, Rune priest and terminator armor. Oh! Rune priest and terminator armor are uh, nice. They gave us, they gave back runic terminator armor. Runic terminator armor give, grants a psyker, grants a rune priest a 4 plus invul save. Which is awesome. Uh, this model replaces runic axe with a runic save. It replaces storm bolter. I love storm bolters now. They're rapid fire too. Like they're like they're rapid fire too. And so basically anything within 12 inches gets bombarded with four bolter shots. Uh, yeah, turbo boost is for bikers, it's for bikes. Uh, a turbo boost, when this weapon model advances, add six to its move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling a die. Now, here's the thing. If you can... Uh, huh. Oh well. I was, uh, it was something else. Sorry, I was, uh, I was thinking on something. Wolf priests are nice. So basically, if a wolf priest is within a certain, is within three inches of another unit or a model, that unit can gain, regain D3 wounds. D3 wounds. Which is amazing. And they have a special rule called Oath of War. You can reroll failed rolls in the fight phase for friendly space walls within six inches of this model. I would put that. I would put a basically. I like I'm saying they're they're really doing a great job of making models useful now. Uh oh wait. Well, I was talking about Stormcaller. He is a Lord of Tempests, so you can add one to any psychic tests you make for Najal. He is a, his runic armor is a 5+, plus. his runic terminator armor is a 4+. Plus. Staff of the Stormcaller. You can re-roll one fail deny the witch test for Najal in each of your opponent's psychic phases. That's, that's not bad. He could still use some work, though. I just like I'm trying to kind of get people to see get more you guys to see the book. All right, so wolf priests in Terminator armor. Uh, well, a wolf priest has a wolf amulet, so they have a four plus invul save no matter what. Uh, wolf priest on bike. 
Oh, they have a spirit. They're spiritual leaders, wolf priests. They can all friendly space wolves units within six inches of this model in the morale phase can use its leadership instead of their own, which is nice. So it's like if you have a wolf, so if you have a wolf priest with a unit of Fenrisian wolves, they won't fall back, or like they. Well, it's not that they'll they won't fall back. It's that they won't be uh, forced to flee as much. Ulrich the Slayer. Oh, oh, oh. He has a rule called Slayer's Oath. You can re-roll fail to hit rolls in the fight sub phase in the fight phase for friendly space wolves units within six inches of this model. If Ulrich the Slayer kills an enemy character or monster, then for the rest of the battle, you can add one to any wound rolls you make in the fight phase for any space wolves units within six inches. That's amazing. So kill a character, all the units around him in six inches get a plus one attack for the rest of the game. Wolfguard battle leaders, which are our thanes. Which I'm actually glad they kind of clarified a little. So, Wolfguard battle leaders. Weapon skill 2, Ballistic skill 3. They have a rule called Huskerl of the Jarl. You can re-roll wound rolls of 1 for friendly space wolves that are within 6 inches of this uh, model. I have to say, these guys have really done... The thing is, the space wolves are a very heavy character-oriented army. Wolfguard battle leader on bike. Wolfguard battle leader in Terminator armor. Wolfgar Ballier on Thunderwolves. Now one of the oldest members of our crew, the mighty Bjorn the Fell Handed. He can move eight inches. Standard dreadnoughts can only move six. Even venerable dreadnoughts can move six. But he's a very special bloke. He's also a character, so he's protected by other units. He has a he has a weapon skill of a two, ballistic skill of a two, strength seven, toughness eight, wounds eight, attacks five, leadership nine, with a three plus armor save. Now, Bjorn may replace his. Now, here's the thing: Bjorn has a assault cannons are now hit a six shots a hit. Oh no, six shots instead of four, which are boss. He has a heavy plasma cannon, but really, the, but really there's no difference unless... Let me just check something. He has a rule called Ancient Tactician, which ha which in the books has said that he gets plus one. Of, he gets plus, He gives the player plus one command point. Last of the company of Russ, he can re uh, friendly model friendly units of space wolves can within six inches can re-roll hit rolls of one. Legendary tenacity. Roll a d6 each time Bjorn the fell handed loses a wound. On a roll of five plus, that wound is not lost. Smoke launchers. So basically, don't take him for granted. You can shrug off. Oh, his true claw. His true claw is strength plus five. So that's twelve. A uh, strength twelve. Uh, so that's five strength twelve attacks, which rend at minus four and cause d6 damage per hit. He can also re-roll failed wound rolls for this weapon. And since he's the last of the company of Russ, he can re-roll hit rolls of one. So he's going to be a boss, and he hits on twos. 
and likely he's going to be killing things on most things on twos and threes. Blood claws got blood claws got so much better. Although I have to say to you guys, I may be sounding a little <clears throat> a little low in the voice. <clears throat> uh, blood claws got so much better, so 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 much better. They can move sickages, of course, but their ballistic, but their weapon skill is a three plus. They can hit. They can actually hit. Their ballistic skill is a four plus, but it's not that bad. Like they have a rule called berserk charge, so they get plus one attack. Oh, chain swords are different now. You get plus one attack. You get an additional attack uh, in every every time they fight. But they but now they also get an additional uh, attack when they charge. They can take a Wolfguard Pack Leader, Wolfguard Pack Leader, or a Wolfguard Pack Leader in Terminator armor. Unless this unit contains a Wolfguard Pack Leader or a Wolfguard Pack Leader in Terminator armor, or is within six inches of a friendly space of Wolfguard, it must declare a charge in its charge phase if it is possible to do so. That's awesome. Lucas the Trickster has become so interesting. Blood Claw Hero can add one to hit rolls you make. Can add one to hit rolls you make for friendly Blood Claw units within six inches of Lucas the Trickster. Meaning that he, if you if a Blood Claw if a unit of Blood Claws is within six inches of Lucas the Trickster, then he can cause. Then basically, what happens is that he chart is that they can hit Blood Claws can hit on twos. That's freaking awesome. That's freaking awesome. Last laugh, Lucas's favorite ability. If Lucas the Trickster is slain in the fight phase, both players roll a die, re-rolling ties. If you roll lowest, nothing happens. If you roll highest, the unit that landed the blow immediately suffers D6 mortal wounds. So that means every time. So basically, mortal wounds are, are different than armor than than regular wounds. What happens is that you cannot save these in any way unless there's a special rule that says. Uh, if, unless this, if this model loses a wound, they can roll d6, get that wound back. Get those wounds back. Pelt of the Doppelgang roll. Your opponent must subtract one from any hit rolls for attacks that target Lucas in the fight phase. Oh, you hit him on fours? No, you hit him on fives now. Grey Hunters. All right, points wise, Grey Hunters are so much better, are back to their original strength. Because, okay, Bolters, because the thing is like fifth edition, Bolters were, were, the, were the Space Wolf, were the Grey Hunters, the bread and butter. So they now have Bolters, Chainsaws, and Bolt Pistols. So they can, so they are a major threat in close combat. So they can get plus one, so that basically when they charge, they get, so when they fight every turn, they fight with two attacks. They fight with two attacks. If they are in, they can, their bolters, and in their fights of, and they're in the shooting phase, they can use, they can shoot their bolt pistols in close combat. A wolf standard allows them to re-roll ones when making an advance or charge move for a unit that has a wolf standard. That is incredibly powerful. Oh, I just drop potted in. I need a nine. I rolled a, f I rolled a four, so I just need a five. Or I rolled a six and I need a three. Roll a one and I need a three. Iron priests. Like they kind of took away the iron priests, the dual iron priests uh, whole thing. Now their now their iron priests are simply HQs. They're not they're not uh, they're not counted as special as uh, elites anymore. Uh, Hellfrost pistol strength eight, AP minus four, D three damage if a model suffer. Now they changed Hellfrost quite a bit here. Uh, if a model suffers an unsaved wound, uh, uh, any unsaved wounds from this weapon but is not slain roll a d6 on a 6 the target suffers a mortal wound which is impressive 
I have to say, I really kind of wish that it was like D3 mortal wounds instead of like a single mortal wound. Oh, yeah, that would be kind of cool. Like, oh, I have, he's frozen now. Now the, now the frost hit me. Uh, Battlesmith. Basically, if the if a rune per, if a wolf is the, if an iron priest is within one inch of a vehicle, he can heal. He can automatically heal D three wounds on the vehicle. But the vehicle can only be repaired once per turn. So it kind of stops you from helping too much. Iron priest on bike. Iron priest on thunder wolf. Cyber wolves. Cyber wolves are their own pack now. They have an ability called. They can move ten inches. They can. They have a th weapon skill of a three with a strength four, toughness four, two wounds each. Attacks three with leadership four with a save of a four plus. Teeth and claws. Swift hunters can only can reroll failed charge rolls for this unit. Wolf scouts got their behind enemy lines back. Set up. So he is within six inches. So basically, you can those the basically it would have been fifth edition. Wolf scouts could go behind the, the enemy's lines, behind um, from the from the enemy's table edge, and come in, and usually could shoot tanks in the back, and then die later. But they changed that. Camo cloaks are a little odd. So if a unit is in cover, so if a unit is like in cover then they can uh, then they can get a two to their armor save instead of a instead of a three instead of a four plus instead of a one to their armor save when in cover wolfen are not bad Bounding low, they can advance and charge, and can reroll failed charge rolls. Death frenzy on a uh, roll a d6 each time a model in this unit loses a wound. On a five plus, that that wound is not lost. If a model in this unit is slain in the fight phase, once the unit that slew them has made its attacks, you can attack with them before removing their model, like in seventh, like in seventh edition. Curse of the Wolfen is slightly different. Now, the Curse of the Wolfen is a little different. Curse of the Wolfen has the hunt and kill, of course, but it's not a table anymore. So you can so in a unit that has that uses hunt can reroll failed uh, charge rolls for for wolf infantry, bikers, and cavalry. But if you, you but you can't but if you use hunt, you can't use the uh, the kill ability. Which is you can make one additional attack for miles and friendly space wolves, uh, infantry, bikers, or cavalry. Lone wolves got so much better, like majorly better. They have an ability called Glorious Death. So on a four plus, if they lose their lap on their last wound, they become. Uh, they can uh, regain that wound on a four plus and not die. But if they do lose it, they can attack again. They can attack there again. And he can reroll failed wound rolls of one. He can never. He's a. Uh, he's an army of one. This model can never have a, a warlord trait. Murder Fang. Oh, Murder Fang. Murder Fang. He's a character, so he's protected by models, and he has seven wounds. No, eight wounds. And his claws are strength times two, so he's a 12. With a th minus three weapon, with a minus three on those, on those, on those, uh, to, to armor. With a, does three damage per. And he can reroll failed wound rolls. And let's see... He has five attacks. He's also equipped with a heavy flamer. So, flamers are a lot better now. Automatically hit. 
Wolf Guard. Combi weapons got so much better for Wolf Guard. You can fire all. The, you can fire a combi weapon like all the shots on a combi. All the weapons on a combi bol bolter, or a com like a combi plasma or a combi melta, at, only at minus one weapon skill, and it's not that bad. It's very good. Like if you have re-rollables, like you can go no wrong. Wolf guard on bikes. You get turbo boost. Arak rock fist. The Anvil of Fenris. The Anvil Shield. Arak has a 3 plus in bull save. In addition, you can reduce all damage suffered by Arak Rockfist by 1 to a minimum of 1. Champion of the King's Guard. You can reroll failed hit rolls for Arak. He's a Thane to the King. So he can reroll so he can reroll wound uh, re wound rolls of one. Champion of the King's Guard. He can reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase when targeting a character. In addition, you can make one additional attack in the fight phase for all models in friendly wolf guard units within six inches of him. Uh, Swift Claws. We have Wolf Guard and Terminator armor here too. Swift Claws. 14 inch movement. That's amazing. They're headstrong. They're, they're, they're headstrong. They have Berserk Charge. They have Turbo Boost, which means that's an additional six. Swift Claw Attack Bites. Just checking how, how much left I have. And it's like I, I may have to... No, I got like a couple of pages left. Like three. Because this thing is like like 11.30 for me. Where I am. Uh, Swift Claw Attack Bikes. So they could be taken in packs of three. This should make a Swift Claw Attack Bike pack. It's like... Storm wolves. Oh, storm wolves are so good. Uh, they're loaded to the gills, and also with weapons, you can like every weapon can point somewhere else, and you don't, there's no firing arc anymore. Uh, Skyhammer missile launcher. Add one to the hit rolls made for this weapon against targets that can fly. Uh, Hellfrost cannon. The heavy two d six dispersed is a heavy two d three. Focus is a heavy two. Hover jets. This model can move. This, before this model moves in your movement phase, you can declare it will hover. Its move characteristic becomes 20 inches until the end of the phase, and it loses the airborne, hard to hit, and supersonic abilities until the beginning of your next movement phase. A storm wolf can transport 16 space wolf models, and here's the and here's one of the amazing things that I love. It does it doesn't matter how many model how many units are in a transport anymore. So, you can have a unit of blood claws and a unit of gray hunters and another unit of gray hunters inside of a storm wolf ready to fight, or you can have a unit of uh, gray hunters. In a drop pie with another with a unit of gray, another unit of gray hunters. It's perfect. It works well. Thunderwolf cavalry. Well, we all know what they have. They are actually impressive. Fenrisian wolves have a thing called pack mentality, which they add plus one. They add one to the unit to their leadership for every for every six or more models or every ten or if the you know, contains ten or more swift hunters you can reroll failed charge rolls for this unit sky claws are simply blood claws so of course we know what these guys are the storm fang gunship not bad the hellfrost destructor is 3d3 so it's like you can get three shots in. And focus heavy three, strength eight, minus four, d6 damage per. And 
long fangs. They have a special ability called fire discipline. They're so much better now. Oh, with heavy weapons, if you move, it's minus one to your ballistic skill. So try, these guys were hitting on fours at their favorite target. And on ones, and if they have to re-roll, and if they roll ones, they can re-roll the hit. So that's the Space Wolf section for Index Imperium 1. Uh, I am very glad about this. I am so super happy about this. Because what this does is it really offers a lot of flexibility. Now, the thing is, I didn't get into the Dreadnoughts and a lot of our vehicles with, yet because I kind of wanted to keep this, kinda, this video down to an hour. But it's already like 40 seconds over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back to you in another video a little later and talk about some of the and talk about the rule the our vehicle the space wolf vehicles that are that are in the space marine section. All right. So, I hope you all had I hope you all enjoyed this happy day and wa and started watching and playing and started playing and started uploading your your battle reports. I can't wait to see them. And I have, and I just can't wait till all of you are, until we're all caught up. Until, and I can't wait for the next for the Space Wolf book that comes out during the uh, after the uh, battle of after the the Crusade after the um, the Plague Wars and the after the Indom and after the Indominus Crusade. So I hope you all had a wonderful time. And I hope you all enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Have a good night, everybody.